Hello, and welcome to Pennsylvania Workers' Compensation Quick Hitters. We are striving to give you workers' compensation information in five minutes or less. This is the next in our series on affirmative defenses. My name is Matthew Esslinger. I'm joined by my colleague, Jonathan Spadea, who will talk to you about the personal animus defense. Before we go anything further, I would advise that we cannot give you any legal advice. And if you have any questions or concerns, please contact us via the information provided at the end of the video. Thank you, Matt. The personal animus defense. This is a defense that can apply when a fight breaks out between two employees or an employee and the general public. The key element that you need to know to apply this defense has to do about why the fight broke out. If the fight has nothing to do with the job, then personal animus exception will apply and exclude the injuries from that fight from the course and scope of workers' compensation. However, if the fight breaks out because of some aspect of the job, then likely this defense does not apply and it could be a workers' compensation injury. An oversimplification for, uh, for some clarification. Say you have two employees working on an assembly line. One turns to the other and says, I don't like your glasses. I think they're dumb. And the other employee gets mad and a fight breaks out. In that case, the personal animus defense does apply because it is wholly personal and has nothing to do with the job. However, if those same employees are working on that same assembly line and one turns to the other and says, you are doing this job wrong. That's not how you make a widget. You should be doing it this way. And then the fight breaks out. Because that conversation had to do with the job itself, the personal animus defense likely does not apply and you cannot use it to bar recovery in the workers' compensation setting. The second thing you need to know about this defense and probably the most crucial is that investigation and documentation is key. As soon as the fight breaks out, get a statement from both parties, get it in writing, and if you can, have them sign and date it. Uh, if there is a video of the event, save that video and review it. If there are witnesses, get their statements as well. Uh, this is important for a number of reasons. One, in the course of human history, anytime there's a fight between two people, there are two sides to that coin and two accounts of what happened. Those accounts can change over time and they will almost always conflict with one another. You need to lock these people into their statements to understand what happened. Two, in these types of situations, it is possible, if not likely, that one of these parties will not be available or willing to testify. They could be arrested, they could be in jail, they could want nothing to do with you. At least, if nothing else, you would have a written and signed statement of it to give an account of what happened. Last but not least, you need to understand that even if this defense does apply, it does not protect you from all potential liability. Once the action is removed from the workers' compensation setting, there may be the potential for a separate tort action in civil court. This underscores the importance of trying to get investigation and documentation done promptly and thoroughly. So with that, those are the three things you need to know about the personal animus defense. Thank you, John, for that great information on the personal animus defense. If you have any questions regarding this topic or any other topic, please use the contact information provided at the end of the video. Additionally, if you would like to look at any of our other videos on Pennsylvania Quick Hitters, please utilize the Video Resource Center at the Chartwell website. Stay tuned, and we look forward to seeing you at the next PA Workers' Compensation Quick Hitters.